All right. Welcome, John Powers, to the Self-Employment Success Podcast. We're excited to have you here. Great to be here. Thank you, Leland. Yeah, I'm excited for today's conversation and just hearing more about your story. Uh, so to start, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, and your business as it stands today. Yeah. So I'm married um, to my wife, Kaylee, and we have two daughters and another on the way. Um, our daughters are three and one and a half. So that's awesome and wild. <laughs> Um, together we have a residential real estate business. So we lead a team under a brokerage and, um, there's seven of us on the team. Five of us are agents and we have two support staff. One of those is a marketing director and others videographer. So, cause we just do a lot of online video stuff. Um, yeah, so that's been really fun. That's awesome. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in the business. I feel like a lot of agents work on teams or are solo. You guys clearly have a really established team in the Virginia Beach area. Um, so yeah, how did you get started? The beginning was, it was a unique starting because um, Kate, my wife and I were, her grandmother had been in the business in real estate for like 40 years and was a really well-known name in Virginia Beach and grew up in Norfolk, the next town over. And um, when she, you know, Kaylee and I had never really thought about getting into real estate. I mean, I, ha I guess I had, but not so much in the way that we ended up doing it. Um, and at the time she was working, she had gotten her degree in social work and uh, her master's in social work was working at a hospital. And I was working in a sales job that I've been doing for a few years and kind of a corporate job that I didn't see myself in long term. And one day we, um, a friend of mine came to me who was interested in getting into real estate. And he said, Hey, can I talk to Kaylee's grandma? I know she's super successful. At what she does. I was like, yeah, let me connect you guys. And, um, so I talked to her about it and, um, Brenda, my wife's grandmother was like, yeah, let's talk. I'd love to talk to him. And by the way, you guys, you guys should think about getting into real estate. You know, I'd love for you guys to take over my business. And I was like, huh? And <laughs> she caught me off guard. Um, but you know, so, it clicked immediately. It was like, Hmm, this is interesting. So I went back home, told Kaylee about that conversation. And, um, it just began a process of trying to discern, is this the right move for us? So yeah, we could kind of get into that later, but basically we ultimately decided to get in to, to move forward with it. Um, get into real estate, at least to get our licenses and, um, join the business. We didn't know a lot of what that was going to look like at the time. Um, but yeah, it felt like the right, the right first move. And so we went all in, which was going from, you know, two salary jobs. Mine was salary and commission to a hundred percent commission. So that was a scary thing to get over, but, um, so far so good about five years in. <laughs> That's awesome. There's so much there to unpack. Yeah. So yeah. to to start, you mentioned, you know, I, I had thought about getting into real estate, but not in the way that we eventually ended up getting into real estate. So there was something on your mind about that world, which is a big world. So I guess, tell us a little bit about what, what you thought or you, earlier when you were dreaming about, you know, potential real estate, where, where were you at in that mindset? Well, uh, I always wanted to not maybe not always, but probably starting sometime in college, I was really excited about real estate investing and started listening to bigger pockets a ton and talking to a few friends that had older friends that had real estate investments. And I was like, mm, I like that. I like this idea of passive income. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just, you know, started reading more books on that. And so real estate was intriguing in that way. Also growing up, my house was under construction my entire life. <laughs> so I felt like just, uh, you know, the, I had a decent understanding of construction and renovation and loved looking at homes since I was like a little kid, which I think a lot of people can relate to that excitement around homes. Um, yeah, so like, that so was you there. go to your friend's house and you're like, wow, this is beautiful. Or yeah. look at this, or they've got this, you know, movie theater in the basement or whatever it may be. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So you are growing up, you're kind of around it you have this idea of, you know, bigger pockets, real estate investing. And then this apparently poor friend came to you and said, I would love to work with your grandmother. You go to grandmother and then grandmother says, well, actually, why don't you do it? 
<laughs> well, the friend, the friend just wanted some advice. He was just, you know, seeking it. He wasn't saying I want to come work for her. Okay. Yeah, so that, like that poor soul. Yeah. Um, but it did open the door to the conversation. I'm, I think they, they spoke and he ended up doing something different, but it opened, you know, it was meant to be that it kind of opened that door for Kaylee and I. Um, yeah. So we jumped in. <laughs> yeah. And you also mentioned this, just how unique it is to go in into business in general with your wife. Mm -hmm. We, we have examples of it. We've got Chip and Joe and, <laughs> you know, all these ideal scenarios of working with your spouse, but I'm sure in reality that poses so many layers and complications to the relationship, mm -hmm. probably in a good way yeah. and in a challenging way. And so you guys both take this leap together, not I'm doing this. And then later you come along with me, but we're yeah. both just quitting our jobs, <laughs> leaving all safety behind yeah. and jumping into a full commission world. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about what it's been like working with Kaylee as your wife kind of being in business together. Um, and I guess a little bit about, you know, that transition. Did you have a ton of money saved? Was it, you know, I guess what were you doing to make yourself feel like, okay, we, we can do this. Um, a couple of things were going on there. Yeah. I guess the, there was a period of trying to figure out, should we do this at all? And should we do this together? And in hindsight, it totally made sense to do, but we were, you know, especially going to the hundred percent commission was a scary thing from having kind of a base income together. And we had, we were married like, six months or something, you know, <laughs> I think uh, I got those numbers, that timeline, right? So it was, it was early in our marriage. Um, so it was a lot, it was a lot at once. And so we did this book called draw the circle, which is the general idea of it is there's a 30 days where you're led through prayer every day around making a decision or around, I think it's a decision or asking God for direction on something or healing on something in a lot of different ways. But in this case, we were just trying to decide, should we move, take, move forward with this? And at the end of that, it felt really clear to us to take the next step. And so that looked like to us to take the night classes for real estate while we were still working full time. So we'd come home from work and throw pizza in the oven. And then we did it virtually, um, like a live class, but those were, those were funny days. And so we knocked that out together. And at that point I was, uh, I had just started hitting the stride in my sales job where I was starting to close a fair amount of business. And I had my largest check coming in. I think if the timeline roughly, you know, this might be June where we decided we're going to move forward with this and did our classes. And then I knew that this check was going to come in August and, um, from a, from a big sale. And so that was a little bit of like, okay, well, this is going to give us some runway to get going. Um, and that made, that gave us a little piece to, to jump in. Um, but yeah, mon like that's where we were at money wise. That helped a lot. We had, um, I was, you know, doing okay. At that job doing pretty well at that job and ha had kind of just started hitting that six figure mark where it was like, okay, it was kind of getting com very comfortable. Mm -hmm. So to go back to zero was scary. Yeah. I mean, even with the clients I serve, even if you have a surplus and you make a change and you still have a surplus, but it's just less. Yeah. It's like you still have the same quality of life, but it feels so much more uncomfortable. Yeah. Because you're like, I'm used to mm -hmm. having this number coming in every month, mm -hmm. this number in my bank account. And whether it's right or wrong, we all kind of find some peace or solace in that. And so then when things are coming, when things are not coming in, especially in real estate, as you're getting started or things are coming in that are a little bit less as you make a transition, it's yeah, it provides a lot of anxiety and tension. It did, <laughs> but well, yeah, I, sh I guess I jumped to that, but it ultimately that runway helped the runway helped for sure. And so what was the, agreement with your grandmother, was she kind of actively, or I guess Kaylee's grandmother, mm -hmm. was she actively leading the team and you guys were underneath her kind of doing a, a commission split or was she more kind of on her way towards retirement and you guys were running the team? How did that 
play out? Were there other teammates on the team at the time that you yeah. came on? Yes, to all the above. There was a, a bunch of different things going. We got we're getting into something we didn't really you know understand how it what was typical, and so we knew that she her desire was to move towards retirement, but at the same time she was also thinking like you know I want to sell real estate until for the rest of my life, but I want to also hand over the reins. So it was a trying to figure all that out was was interesting, but we you know stayed united through it. It wasn't like then you know thankfully probably like one or two somewhat hard conversations, never really that hard. It was a lot of grace from her grandmother and a lot of give, like she wanted to bless us with that, which was pretty wild. Mm. Or, you know, she wanted us to succeed, I guess, in it. And she wasn't trying to say like, oh, you need to do this, this or this for me. But at the beginning, there was a, we, any of our sales, a split of it went to her. And um, that was just part of how we had set it up, it made sense. And that's typically in the team model of real estate the team leader who's taking on a lot of different expenses. Um, if you're under that team, there's a split that you have within the team that part of that part of your sales going to the team as a whole, the team business. Mm. To cover everyone's kind of getting the same marketing. Everyone's kind of mm -hmm. having a support staff help them write yep. up agreements, things like that. All that. Okay. So yeah, it could be, it depends on the team, but there could be a, yeah, tons of overhead or it could be very straight, very simple. But um, at the time ours, there's somebody on staff um, helping with all the transactions, all the marketing, all that stuff. And since then, it's it's changed what we provide, but um, we have a heavy on the marketing. <laughs> yeah. And so it sounds like, based on what you said now, you've got five agents, two support staff, but it, it sounds like Kaylee's grandmother is no longer on the team. She's mm -hmm. probably, I'm assuming, retired or move forward along with that other support staff. So how quickly did it happen where, okay, we're coming in, we're learning the ropes, we're um, splitting with Brenda and um, kind of have the benefits of her team mm -hmm. to, okay, now we are running the team and we're kind of taking over what we provide. We're calling the shots on what the team provides yeah. and things like that. It was a, that was an interesting dynamic because we were pretty young and we came in, there was a few other uh, folks that, on the team that had been with her for different periods of time, some 30 plus years though. And um, it was hard to, it was, you know, unique to step into as a 20, mid twenties and kind of like, am I, I'm kind of running the show now because I'm starting to pay the bills, but I also am figuring this out. <laughs> yeah. So trying to be humble and navigate it and it, it all worked out in the end, but it was, that was, that was interesting. What, one of the dynamics was Brenda was, um, I've been doing this for so long. She kind of had her systems down. And so Kaylee and I, we, you know, they had their systems, but it wasn't her style. Couldn't be necessarily our style as new being new in the business. So we kind of had to figure out what's our style, what, you know, where do we need help? Where do we, Cause we, we learned a ton from her just as far as communicate. How do we communicate with people, um, questions to ask all that stuff. But we also had to kind of make it our own because mm. coming from just a seasoned vet who had been doing this for a long time and had the, a different personality type than us too. She could, she could command the room in a different way than I could, um, just from experience. And so there was that. And then another dynamic in all this was that in the first year of working together, we started realizing her health, her, her memory was something was up. And, um, so that began, you know, we started having more and more conversations about that and, um, realized she, she kind of realized with conversation with the family, like that she probably shouldn't be, she wanted to step out of the real estate role because mm. she could tell that there was issues with her memory that weren't, that were affecting how could she could do business. So that was a really hard time of us all navigating that together. Um, my wife be, being her grandmother, trying to figure out how to it, just more, you know, being sad that that was uh, happening for her. And um, it, you know, developed into dementia. Um, and so that she, she stepped out of the business and we've had to kind of go forward with, how do we uh, keep her legacy alive, honor her as she's 
handed this business to us probably faster than she was expecting at the beginning or any of us were expecting. And, um, yeah, how do we also take care of these, these relationships that she had formed over all these years? Mm. And, um, some of them we never got to meet before she had stepped out of the business. So we've got to had, you know, come in and be like, Hey, uh, yeah. So I'm Brenda had chosen Kaylee and I had to join in her business and we worked alongside her for a few years and now it, we're working together. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a good challenge and a good, or, well, good elements from the business standpoint, but it's been hard, of course, just to walk through that together as a family. Yeah. Again, there's so much to your story of, you know, really successful grandmother with a, with a well-known name brings you into the business in your first year of marriage, leaving <laughs> safety behind, and then quickly being in a place where we're learning the ropes, we're learning the ropes. Oh, she's now understanding she needs to step out of the business, which is normal. Like we all know grandparents who over time, their mind begins to go. And I think it's wonderful and wise that she kind of came to that understanding and said, Hey, I need to step back from this. And, but now you guys are left as the heirs with the family name, the family, like you are the family, you are the legacy. People would call the Brenda Rawls team and they'd get me on the phone and be like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and you're not even, Hey, Brenda's my grandmother. Right. Brenda's right. my wife's grandmother. <laughs> and so to try and honor her and, and you're still learning and mm -hmm. to try and assume those relationships kind of throws you, I'm assuming throws you both just deep into the fire quickly. Yes. Of, Hey, we had a little bit of time, probably six months to a year of, of figuring this out. And then boom, now we're running the show. Now we're assuming these relationships. Now we're in charge of what this team is going to do. And like you said, we're younger and the way that we're going to do things is going to be different than Brenda, who could rely on her relationships that she's built for probably 30, 40 years mm -hmm. and has her style, has her marketing down. And you guys are now assuming that and forging a path for yourself at the same time. Yes. I mean, that is just entrepreneurship at its core yeah. <laughs> in many yeah. ways. And I'm sure is, is a story for so many other self-employed families who... Mm -hmm if they're not forging it on their own, they're succeeding someone else or taking over a family business or purchasing another business where, Hey, it's the, it's the legacy of this, but with a new face and flavor. Mm -hmm. And there's so much delicacy to balancing that. Can you speak to that? Like as you're that dynamic of, Hey, I'm reaching out to a faithful old client of Brenda's who doesn't know me. Mm -hmm. how, what was that like trying to assume that relationship, trying to honor her and, you know, also continue to grow and build the business? Um, it was, it's, it's getting easier and easier. It was hard at the beginning because it felt like it was a lot to assume and we wanted to honor Brenda, not, uh, you know, at the same time, I wanted to put myself in the shoes of this other person and be like, okay, you've never met me. You don't know who I am, but we do, you know, genuinely want to be able to serve your real estate needs and anything we can help you with, um, in the same way that you've come to expect. So just trying to continue that relationship and stay humble. And, um, that was our dynamic, but also it was, you know, I feel like it, we had one thing that made it easier was we'd had uh, Brenda's blessing very clearly. She was mm. like, these are my, these are my, you know, I've given, I've handed over my business to my granddaughter and her husband and they're very capable. They're really, you know, she really, that was uh super, super, super helpful mm. just in how she communicated to us about it and to others. And that helped a ton. Yeah. So you did have a season of being able to I just, either just in the community talking about it or through whatever marketing funnels to say, like, these are yeah. her to say, like, this is my granddaughter. I mean, mm -hmm. to those listening, I've met Brenda and Kaylee, and Kaylee is just the spitting image of Brenda. So having them <laughs> next to each that other, helped. you're like, you are clearly a member of this family. Mm -hmm. um, but you did have a, a season of her kind of publicly being like, this is my, I have 
passing this down and this is my blessing and mm -hmm. It's it's still our neighborhood. It's still our family. We're yeah. still serving. We did that through personal letters, Christmas cards. We did it through uh, a magazine articles, different things that just kind of got the word out in the community, so that people kind of understood it. Mm -hmm. And then about two years ago, um, we rebranded the business from the Brenda Rawls team to Powers and Rawls, mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to again, kind of continue that legacy of what Brenda had built and also kind of reflect the new that we were in, in this together and kind of carrying it forward. Mm. Um, but just because it had become a, a trustworthy name in, in that world, in the real estate world in Virginia beach and in the surrounding areas, we wanted to keep that, name keep that, keep that name recognition and, um, yeah, but also may, we felt like a shift in the name made sense since people were expecting to, you know, if they wanted to talk to Brenda, Brenda wasn't there. That was a hard, you know, it was like, well, you're talking, we can talk. Yeah. Well, and, <laughs> so as, they're, 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 they're and as, they're, as new relationships are coming yes, in, even new who don't know Brenda, exactly, exactly, it's like, it. okay, well, I'm working with John Powers mm -hmm. at Brenda Rawls' team. Who's Brenda? Yeah. And so I'm sure there's a, a place of saying we're honoring we're keeping the name. Mm -hmm. We are the legacy that it's the same quality as it has been, but the powers family yep. are now the ones running it. And with the last name, like powers, it's a strong name to put on marketing. <laughs> Thank you. Brenda Rawls powers team. <laughs> um, so going back to working with your spouse, I've, I've worked with a handful of couples who are in business together. Honestly, some of them are in business together. Some of them just both own their own businesses mm -hmm. and sometimes dividing the line between business and personal gets hard. You yeah. are at the dinner table talking about work. You're on a date talking about work or you're in the office talking about personal life. And I find that some people that that navigation is pretty easy and natural. And for others, it's really difficult and trying to find when does our business partnership end and our marriage begin. And so what was that like for you and Kaylee, both early on and today? And have you yeah. had kind of a journey there? Or has it always been pretty seamless? Uh, start, definitely been a journey starting at the beginning. We, it was a, it was a definite fear going in. We were like, or we were a little nervous about how, what that dynamic would be like, but we, uh, very, yeah, we, we didn't know. And so we got into it and we started realizing it just was all consuming for us at the beginning. I mean, because it was like, we had staked it all on this one throw. And so, and it was new. So it was, there was a part that, of it that, that was really fun. We wanted to talk about it and that was okay. But then it just started to overrun. It was like, you go on a date night and we're talking about work for the majority of the time where we go like one of the funny dynamics that I would joke Kaylee on. is like, we'd be in bed and like head hit the pillow, it's to, uh, lights her out and closing my eyes. And she'd be like, Oh, by the way, uh, don't forget that uh, tomorrow. And I was like, oh no, why did you say that? <laughs> now I can't sleep. Yeah, now no. I'm having dreams about this client meeting. <laughs> and so we learned for, like, I was like, okay, we can't do this. I, my brain does not work that way. Like I'm going to not be able to sleep tonight. I need to disconnect. So there was different dynamics like that that we had to figure out, like, this is not going to work. And, um, yeah, I think that it just, it was so early on in our marriage. And then, uh, within a year of joining real estate, starting the real estate business, we had our first child and then we had our second. Gosh, that was within a year. Later. So within a year of marriage, you start this business and then when the, in yeah. a year of business, you have a child, y'all are just plowing through life transitions. Yeah, exactly. That's what we were doing. <laughs> yeah. At the beginning, when, when our first daughter was born Virginia. We were like, it was, we were just laughing of like, we did three things in like a year's time that people say you shouldn't do or not shouldn't do, but like that any one of those things is a lot to figure out. Like got married. That was a lot to figure out. <laughs> Started a business together. That was a lot to figure out. Had a child and all of that at yeah. once. Yeah. I mean, all each one of those things are things that when you're looking back on your life are like momentous milestone things. Like, and then this, in this part, season of my life, we got married. Right. And then we had our first child and we started this business. You guys just compiled that into one year of your life or two years of your life. That's 
Yeah, that's intense. It, it was intense. We re- we very quickly realized we needed help, and we weren't yeah too prideful to say it. I don't think. I mean, we w- one thing that really helped is my brother, and this was part of what excited me about getting into business. There had been some entrepreneurs in our family, um, my gra- both my grandparents in different ways, and um, my brother had a few businesses, and his wife had separate businesses, but they did a lot of it together. So we saw that because we're close, saw that up close and personal and the benefits of that get, you know, getting to do things to more, spend more time together and go on trips together and things like all the dynamics of that. So we liked that, but we also, um, he introduced me to this resource of a life coach. And so we, Kaylee and I, we weren't like, you know, I wouldn't say we weren't like at rock bottom at all or anything like that, but we just knew we're like, okay, all these dynamics at once, this is a lot to chew, to bite off and chew. And so we just knew that there was a lot of conversations that would help our marriage, keep us healthy. If we, Mm. um, had another resource and what we basically, we weren't going to go there without somebody else for some Yeah, Yeah. Bringing you there. It's honestly, it's kind of, uh, it's very, it's, um, it's like working with a financial advisor. I will tie this together. Like, <laughs> um, I pay like paying the life coach was valuable in that. We, it forced us to come to the con- to have the conversations. Mm. And she also had expert advice and could walk alongside it with us. And yeah, there was a, just, that was huge to us staying united in our marriage and in business. Like we both, we talked about both all the time and then having kids too. Um, yeah. And so that was a huge resource for us relationally to stay together. And I, it, yeah, being in business together, all of those things are hard. Marriage alone is hard. <laughs> marriage <laughs> by itself is hard. Then throwing kids in the mix is, is, has its challenges too. And then being in business together, it's, it was a lot at once. So I can't, I'm a big, big fan of having a, help in that counselor or a yeah, life coach was huge for us. That's awesome. And it is important. I mean, I think anybody would say these things, any, I mean, life coach or counselor would say these things really do impact you. Mm-hmm. I mean, they add stress and everything is a house of cards, just like in finance, your investments affect your taxes, in fact, what insurance you need affect your estate plan. Similarly, your work affects your stress, which affects your relationships, your kids and, you know, which affects how you treat your kids and Mm -hmm. sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. All of these things are tied together. We love to try and compartmentalize, but you can't really compartmentalize. And so I can only imagine having someone come in, asking you the hard conversation, asking you the hard questions, making you have the hard conversations. And if you're willing to go there, I think, people it's uncomfortable to go there even in your marriage but it it sounds like you guys something you said multiple times throughout this episode is just we were trying to stay humble like we wanted to stay humble in our business we were humble enough to know we were not going to have these conversations without help and we were humble (laughs) enough to like bring someone into that help which i think is really admirable and important and it and it sounds like you guys were aware enough to invest not only time in your business but then time in your marriage, realizing that's going to be the healthiest part too. Yeah. Our healthy marriage will make us a healthy business right. and make our kids healthy. And, you know, everything kind of stems from that. And so, yeah, I think that's wonderful and powerful and also complex. What a wild season <laughs> of life. <laughs> it, was. it is. It still is. Yeah. That's, and yeah. so are you guys still doing marriage counseling or, or not marriage counseling, marriage life coaching or kind of how has that progressed to where you are now? Um, we are not actively like meeting with, a with Julia, who is our life coach at the, for a few years. And, um, but we, she has some other resources that were actually just started this year. Um, she has like a course that you can do called marriage thrive. So we were jumped back into that together. And, um, for us, we wanted to, because we had every two weeks for a few years, we had had that rhythm of speaking with Julia and learning from her. And, and also we would put off conversations until we were sometimes, you know, this wasn't this, 
wasn't like the healthy thing to do, but we'd be like, okay, this is going to be a hard conversation. Maybe we'll have it with kind of a referee in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Julia, we're in a fight. Can yeah. Hop on a call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but we wanted to explore like, all right, let's do this. You know, we got to, we can't, we, we could, but let's try this on our own and see, um, how we can use these tools we've learned for the past few years. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did this past year. And, um, it was good overall, but we found, you know, it's easy to go back into your old ways of thinking and habits and patterns of conversations, the dance of, of the relationship. So we, um, figured like, we just want to have something that is keeping us in the conversation of having the tough conversations that turn into like great joy and depth and intimacy, mm. you know, um, that's what we found. Yeah. So I, I love highlighting the fact that so often we talk about marriage being hard, kids being hard, business being hard, these conversations being hard. But what you said there was, well, we do that because it also produces connection and yes. joy and intimacy. Yeah. It's like shedding of the gunk, cleaning out the pipes mm -hmm. and really like allowing your life to flow fluidly through them. And so I, I feel like that's true, not only in first and foremost, your marriage, but also that's why business is hard, but people also do it because it's, it's hard, but it produces reward and yes, brings you to life and, and provides a life for you that you want. And, mm -hmm. um, same with kids. Everyone would say kids are hard. No one's like, <laughs> kids have been so easy, but there's so much love and joy and, and yeah. fruit there that is to be born. Um, so what surprised you most about your journey through self-employment so far? Hmm. Well, I think some of what we were talking about here, uh, the marital dynamics and the growth there was a surprise of just, you know, how much we'd need to press into that and then mm -hmm. how much we would as a result grow from it. Yeah. Um, there's seasonality to it. You know, we've been doing this for about five years and, um, there's seasons that feel great and there's seasons that are really hard. Um, I feel like we're end of this past year was a slower business time in the real estate world as interest rates rose. And so that was hard in ways. And we had had a year of growth as far as like a uh, number of team members, which was really fun. We loved all that. Um, but we wanted to see the, the sales match, the, uh, <laughs> the growth, the, yeah, team, the overhead growth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we were feeling that pressure. And as we're coming into the new year, that pressure has subsided a lot. Um, but that's just a little example of, you know, the year to year, there's all of these, all these dynamics at play. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. I like what you said about how business is very similar in that way. There's so many different dynamics at play and to keep the health, you have to be looking at a lot of different fronts. Um, yeah. We actually have, speaking of that, we have a business coach too. So we, we don't have a life coach anymore, but I do have a business coach now. So we're trying to get health, more health there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's wonderful. That's good. Yeah. And what has been the low point? Mm. Early on, that was when um, we realized that Brenda was going to have to step out of the business early, way earlier than any of us expected. That was really hard. Because we were, um, I just weren't sure exactly how that was going to look. And, you know, there's, we, Kaylee and I were concerned, like, how do we keep these relationships with all these people we haven't met and we're going to be able to do this and just doubt in like, can we, can we push through to make this successful? Like we had been in it long enough to start it to, we were getting a little bit of a hang of it, but. Yeah, it was still, there was a lot of also just sat, you know, wishing that we could pr continue on as a whole unit mm. um, and had more years together in that. So that was, that was hard. Um, yeah, but in, in hindsight, you know, it, the growth from that was, was powerful mm. because it was, it was sink or swim. Yeah. So this is a podcast about success mm -hmm. and 
that word success means different things to different people if you ask them how to define it. So in your words, what does success look like and how will you know when you've achieved it? Hmm. I think that's a great question. I, the success, having the freedom for me, success of would be like having freedom to choose how I'm going to spend my time and at the same time have the resources or, you know, the income to support my family and the lifestyle that we, well, that we are hoping for. Mm. So I think, you know, cause I was, yeah, knowing that this was about success, I was thinking about that general concept and I was thinking about like, on one end, we're not thinking like, uh, the fire movement where it's like, uh, I forget what that's financial independence, retire early. Mm -hmm. We, it, it's not, I think there's different paths to that. And I was, we also wanted to, you know, there's the dynamics that we are thinking like, maybe we'll send our kids to private school and we want to go on certain vacations together as a family. And, um, you know, all, all those dynamics of, so there is a, there's definitely a, a money piece to it, but bigger than that would be that we could be together mm. and, um, you know, spend time as a family. And also we're big into relationships in general, that's you know, our family, but also, um, friendships and mentoring and caring for others is a huge part of what gets us just excited about life. And so we would love to, um, for the business to be the fueling that, um, but success would look like having the freedom to choose to do those things in the middle of my day and, mm. um, to be with family and yeah, that's awesome. So that was a long answer. <laughs> it was a great answer. Well, thank you for being on the self-employment success podcast. Loved it. Thanks for having me.